It used to be that this was the only way you could create a modal with Ionic in an Angular application. You can use the modal controller to create a modal in your class. You call the present method to show it. And if you also want to pass some data back out of that modal when it dismisses, you could do that by creating an on did dismiss handler. So this is all fine and you can still do modals this way, but I would say that this is an imperative approach to handling modals. And I want to show you what a declarative approach would look like utilizing the template and why I prefer a declarative approach. So I'm not going to get into the differences between imperative and declarative in a more broad sense in this video. I'll link to another video in the description for that. But although this isn't the definition of imperative versus declarative, generally within Angular applications, declarative approaches often rely on utilizing components in the template, whereas more imperative approaches rely on executing code in the components class. Now this is just a very simple example with a simple modal, but if we take a look at the modal component itself that's being used, the hello component, it just has a simple template with a message. You can click a button to dismiss it. And within the class for that component being used as the modal, we also use the modal controller to dismiss it. Okay, so now I've switched to the declarative example. Now, apart from me changing the title to declarative, uh, it behaves in the exact same way. I can open this and I can close it. And you can see here with the actual modal component itself, nothing has actually changed here. And we are still using the modal controller to dismiss it when we click that close button. But if we open up the class for our parent smart component, the home page, you can see that we've actually moved all of the code related to creating the modal from this class. We no longer use the modal controller at all in our homepage. And what we have done instead is we have replaced it with this ion modal component inside of our template. So you can see here, we use the ion modal component and we supply our component that we want to display inside of it in the template. And instead of calling the present method on the modal, we instead use this is open property to determine whether or not the modal is open or not. And in this case, we are doing it with a stream. So we have a modal is open stream. And so whatever value that emits or whatever the last value it emits is, that's going to determine whether the modal is open or not. Now you don't have to do this with a stream. You could just do this with a simple value that you bind in your class here. You could just have a class member that's a simple Boolean value. But if you are using a more reactive approach using streams and on push change detection, this kind of approach with streams does tend to work a bit nicer. And one more important aspect of this approach is that we need to make sure we manually handle setting our open state back to false when the modal dismisses. So we have this stream that determines whether it's open or not. And to open the modal, we just call next on that stream with a true value. But even though we can dismiss the modal by just clicking this close button because we're calling the dismiss method on the modal controller, we also need to make sure that our own is open value gets set back to false. So that's why we have this ion modal did dismiss listener here. We call our handle dismiss method and that is what handles setting the value for that stream back to false. And on top of that, if we do want to, again, pull data out of that modal, the data that it dismisses with, we can also do that here as well. So in this stripped down version, both of these options look pretty similar. And it seems there probably isn't really any particular benefit to either approach aside from just style preferences. Although I would argue the declarative approach is slightly simpler as you don't need to inject the modal controller in the parent component. However, if you are taking a reactive approach to building your application and relying more heavily on streams, this declarative template based approach is, at least in my opinion, much easier to work with for more complex scenarios. So as an example, let's take a look at an example from this application. So I've actually done a more broad video about this application. So I'll link to that in the description if you want to check it out. But let's just focus on how I'm using the modals here. 
So in this example, I'm using the same modal to control both creating new checklists and editing existing checklists. So if I'm just creating a new checklist, then I just trigger the next method on the form modal is open stream and the modal is going to open. However, to handle editing a checklist, I trigger an edit when this checklist list component emits its edit event and it's going to supply us with the checklist that I'm interested in editing. So when that event does emit, I call the open edit modal method. That's going to handle setting the form value to the existing value. It is also going to uh, trigger that form modal is open stream to emit a true value. But I also emit a value on the checklist ID being edited stream that matches whatever the ID of that checklist is. So this gives me all the information I need to display the modal correctly. I have the existing value. I have a stream of the ID that we want to edit. And I have my stream uh, indicating that the modal should be open. Then all of the logic for deciding how to display that modal is handled in the template using those streams. I just need to emit the correct values on the stream. So I've just expanded this so we can see it a bit better. And you can see here that I create a view model with both of the values from those streams, the ID being edited and the is open value. I then use the is open value to determine if the modal should be open or not. And this is just exactly the same as our simpler example. And I use the presence of a non null value for checklist ID being edited to determine whether we are editing a checklist or creating a new one. So I use that to determine what title to display for the modal. And I also use it to determine which method should be called when the data is saved. And just like with the simpler example, when the modal dismisses, I also need to make sure to set that is open value back to false. But in this case, I also need to make sure that I set the checklist ID being edited back to null as well. So that means that the next time the person goes to open the modal, if they just want to create a new checklist, there won't be a valid value here and the app won't think that we're trying to edit whatever we were just trying to edit. So the values in the streams are what is controlling everything here and the template just reacts to those streams changing. So I've actually gone back and re-implemented this with the more imperative approach so we can contrast the two examples. And so this is what a more imperative approach would look like. So I've removed that ion modal component entirely from the template. So now everything is going to be handled in our parent smart component in the class. And in our template, we're no longer nexting values on streams. We're just calling simple methods to control when to open the, the modal for creating checklists and the modal for editing checklists as well. And then if we take a look at those methods, we have our uh, two different methods here, both of which are making use of the modal controller. And I've actually created a little uh, factory method here since both of these modals effectively create the exact same modal apart from the title. I just created this little create modal uh, method here and that's going to handle using the modal controller to pass in all the values we need, including whatever the title should be. And then our two other methods, the open modal and open edit modal can make use of that create modal function rather than having to create the modal from scratch each time. But otherwise, this is pretty similar to what I've already shown you. We just handle everything in this method. And if we have data being passed back, we just handle it like this. So in the end, there isn't an insane amount of difference here. Mostly we have moved the complexity from the template into the class here or we might move it from the class to the template if we're going with the more declarative approach. And I'm just going to quickly switch back to the declarative approach again, which you can see simplifies our class here. And again, we've got that uh, component back in the template. So just for me personally, I think the declarative approach is a bit simpler and neater. I like being able to see exactly how the modal is going to behave just with what is defined here with what we supply to the modal and the values we set with strings. I also do just generally prefer a declarative style of programming and working reactively with streams. So depending on your own preferences, you might not like this approach. And I did mention that I don't want to get into the sort of broader differences between imperative and declarative in this video, but I do 
think that at least to some degree a declarative style is going to be a less error prone sort of approach because there's less sort of manual handling of data and custom logic and things like that running. So if you feel like leaving a comment, let me know which approach you like better or if you have a different way of handling scenarios like this, it would be great to see some more examples of how different people are approaching it. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you have a great day. Feel free to hit that subscribe button before you leave and I will catch you next time.